135.3. We purchased it for 135,300. It could be multiple pieces of equipment or one piece of equipment. And uh, what we're going to do with the equipment is we're going to put it on the books as an asset, similarly to how we put supplies on the books as an asset. And then we want to expense it as we use it. But unlike supplies, where we could count how much we used and we could say, hey, we used this many uh, reams of paper, therefore I can see how it went down. Let's just write down the supplies by the amount that has been used. Uh, obviously, a building or like a forklift or something like that, we couldn't just write down because after time has gone by, we know that the forklift went down in value, but we still have one forklift. It's not like we can count the forklift and now we have less than one forklift. So that means that we're going to have to depreciate some other way, some other estimated way. And we'll talk about estimates at a later time. The simplest type of estimate would just be to divide it over the number of years. That's called the straight line method. But whatever method we use, we want to tell our reader two things. We don't want to just write down the equipment account because if we did so, then uh, they wouldn't know how much we bought it for. And because it's such an estimate, we want to tell them how much we bought the stuff for and how much we're estimating it to be written down by. Therefore, what we've done here is we've kind of cut the T account in half. So it's like the debit side and then the credit side. So here's the debit side and here's the credit side. We are end up, therefore, with a contra asset account, meaning this account is the credit half of the equipment account. Therefore, it's a credit even though it's green and that means it's an asset. It's an asset with a credit balance most assets have debit balances and that's why it's a contra asset account so before we post this we can see that we bought it for this amount minus this amount adds up to 37,350 that's the book value now we're going to increase the amount that it's going down by increasing the credit which will decrease the book value so that's what's happening here and then the depreciation is what it represents is the devaluation of the property plant and equipment in this case the equipment it represents the depreciation the use of the decline in value the use of the equipment in the same time period as to help us generate revenue so we're going to post that here and they're just going to have to give us the number so although this is probably the most difficult conceptual adjusting entry we've had so far it's actually the easiest one to post if you just kind of memorize it because right now we're going to have to give you the number of 1100 and we're going to credit 1100 and then if we post that out then we can go to depreciation expense down here in cell H21 equals and point to the debit uh, that's a debit balance account that's debit it's going to bring the debits go up puts us out of balance brings net income down then we'll go to the accumulated depreciation in H11 say that equals the credit the credit is going to go up in the credit direction so the contra asset goes up, which brings the book value, which is this minus this, down. So the book value went from here, 25.2, uh, sorry, here, 37,350, down to here, these two accounts, uh, 36.250, uh, which of course is a difference of 1,100. Okay, so I'm going to unhighlight these and do the last one here. So we're going to unhighlight these. All right, C then says, when the accounting department pays insurance, the account that is debited is prepaid insurance. As of the cutoff date, prepaid insurance is calculated to be 6000 So once again, let's go through our method and see which accounts might be affected. We have one balance sheet account above the blue line related to insurance. In this case, it's going to be prepaid insurance. So I'm going to make that uh, highlight that to show that that will be affected one account below the blue line either revenue or some type of expense in this case some type of expense that expense called insurance expense we know that expenses all have debit balances we know that they only go up in the debit direction so how do we make something go up we do the same thing to it which in this case would be another debit so i'm going to copy this I'm going to make sure that that is a debit right on top because the debits generally go on top if the only other account affected is prepaid insurance then that should be a credit so i'm going to copy that put that on the bottom and make that prepaid insurance so once again we can kind of see which way it's going without really understanding what's going on so now let's talk about what's going on so what is prepaid insurance how did it get there when we pay for uh, insurance by definition we're getting something 
for in the future. So we can't pay for insurance after an accident happens if we're paying for car insurance or something like that because that's not how insurance works most of the time. Might work that way now for health insurance, but but for car insurance, you generally have to pay before the the accident. So then what that means is when we buy it, we got it, we have an asset, and then we should then expense that asset over the over the uh, coverage of the insurance. So we're going to put it on as an asset, then we're going to expense it as of the coverage of the insurance. So uh, this is the amount that the accounting department has put on there. We have now determined that we have consumed uh, part of that, and the amount that is left is 6000 in this case. So what we're saying is this is what we have on the books so far, and we now think that uh, we have consumed um, some of it, and the amount that is left is 6000 Therefore, we're going to have to, what do we have to bring this down by in order to bring it to 6000 the amount that we have determined? That's going to be a subtraction problem of 12000 minus the 6000 in this case. So we've got to bring this down by 6000 to bring it to what we determined it to be, which is 6000 Now, um, there's two ways that we could ask this question. Note that uh, in this format, we're saying as of the cutoff date, prepaid insurance is calculated to be, meaning we're saying what this account, this account should be, and in this case, it should be 6000 We could also format this and say that this is the amount of prepaid insurance that has expired, that has been used throughout the time period. If we said that, then we would just be saying exactly what the expense should be. So in this case, it happened not to matter because it's 6000 or 6000 either way. We used 6000 and there will be 6000 left. We used half of it. But if it's not in that proportion, be careful that the question could be asked either way. We could say, do the calculation, say this is how much is still prepaid. Or we can say how much this should go down by saying how much has yet has been consumed. So in this case, we're going to say it's 6000 and credit of 6000 and once we post that, we assume that this will go down to what we calculated it to be, which in this case is 6000 So let's post this. I'm going to go down to H19 uh, and equals, and we'll point to the expense. The expense will go up, put us out of balance, and bring net income down. So remember, net income is the income revenue here, minus all whoop, revenue here, minus all of the expenses, which is that's the 83980, 83980. This is income not uh, a loss then we'll be up here in h8 we're going to say this equals and we'll point to the credit that's a debit that's a credit that's going to be the opposite which will make this go down puts us back in balance here and we now see that this is the six thousand which matches what we think it what we calculated it to be